Hello everyone. In this module, we are going to study about the biogeographical zones of India. India is one of the 12th mega diverse regions of the world. So, it is very convenient to divide India into 10 regions based upon their geography, climate, patterns of vegetation and animal life. Each region will have a variety of ecosystems like forests, grasslands, wetlands, rivers and lakes which will have specific plants and animal species. In this module, we are going to study about the concept of biogeographical zones of India and the distribution of its species. Biogeography is the study of the distribution of species that is biology, organisms and ecosystems in geographic space and through time. Biogeogra biogeography is divided into two parts, phytogeography that deals with origin, distribution and environmental relationships of plants and zoo geography that deals with the migration and distribution of animals. Biogeographic classification of India describing 10 biogeographic zones in India are further divided into 25 secondary units called biogeographic provinces giving weight to particular communities separated by dispersal barriers or gradual change in environmental factors. The classification was done using various factors such as altitude, moisture, topography, rainfall, etc. Biogeographic zones were used as a basic for planning wildlife protected areas in India. The 10 biogeographic zones which are distinguished clearly in India and each harbor its own assemblage of animal and plant communities. These 10 zones of India are described here in this slide. Talking about the first zone that is the Trans Himalayan zone. The Trans Himalayan zone consists of 5.6 percent of the country's geographical area. This zone includes high altitude cold and arid mountain areas including cold deserts and extinction of the Tibetan plateau this zone has sparse alpine steppe vegetation with endemic species such as ibis, snow leopard, black netted crane, marbled cat, marmots. It supports some of the biggest populations of wild sheep and goats in the world as well as some rare species of fauna such as snow leopard. The black netted crane is the most distinct bird of an impressive and distinct heavy fauna developed in lakes and marshes. In the slide you can see the snow leopard and the Himalayan balsam. Himalayan zone. The Himalayan zone consists of the entire Himalayan mountain range. This zone covers 6.4 percent of the total geographical area and has alpine and subalpine forest, grassy meadows, and moist deciduous forests. More than 300 million population of the Indo-Gangetic plain are dependent on the Himalayan waters. The Himalayan zone has diverse habitats for a range of species including endangered ones such as hangul and musk deer. In lower subtropical belt, mixed deciduous forests occupy lowest elevations that are replaced by chirf pine and then by bhanj peat and then by banj oak at around 2000 meter elevations. In the slide we can see the musk deer and the chair pine, the Indian desert. Biogeographically it is the eastward extension of the Sahara Arabian desert system which spread through Iran, Afghanistan and Baluchistan to the Thar area on the Indo-Pakistan border. This arid zone falls west of the Aravali hill range and comprises both the salt and sand deserts of northwestern India. Consists of 6.6 percent of the world's geographical area, 
This zone also has large expansions of grasslands that support several endangered species such as the great Indian bustard. The plant species are Acacia nilotica, Prosopis, Salvadora and Ticomilla. Prosopis and other species are becoming increasingly widespread. In the slide, we can see the Chinkara and the Babul flora, the semi-arid zone. This zone covers 16.6% of the country. Although overall semi-arid, this zone also has several lakes and marshlands. The grasses and palatable shrub layer of this zone supports the highest wildlife biomass. Many plant taxa have African affinities like Acacia, Balanites and Capris. Forest community occurs only in this zone on gentler slopes of the Aravali and associated hill ranges. The endangered Asiatic lion is also found in this zone in the gate forest of Gujarat. The largest herbivores are blackbuck, chausinga, nilgai and gazali. One part of this zone surrounds desert zone of the western Gujarat and Rajasthan and other part consists of rain shadow areas behind the western ghats. In the slide we can see the Asiatic lion and in the fauna we can see the dhauras. Western Ghat zone. Western Ghats is a mountain range running along the western coast of peninsular India from Tapti river in the north to Kanyakumari in the south. The moist evergreen forests are most extensive in the western Ghats. Consisting 4% of the country's geographical area, this zone supports tropical evergreen forests that are home to approximately 15,000 species of higher plants and of which around 4,000 are endemic. The rainfall is heavy, possibly more than 2,000 mm in most areas but can exceed 5,000 mm in some areas. Forests have been replaced by tea, coffee, cocoa, rubber, cardamom, cinchona and other plantations. There are several endemic faunal species as well such as Nil Giri Langur and the lion tailed macaque. The Malabar grey hornbill is a good indicator of healthy and mature deciduous forest along the western ghats. In the slide we can see the lion tailed macaque and the evergreen forest. The Deccan Peninsula. This is the largest zone covering as much as 42% of the country. The Deccan Highlands constitu constitute the principal catchment for a number of South India's main rivers that is Narmada, Tapti, Mahanadi and Godavari. Sal and Teak, the precious timber species, it supports some of the finest forest in India with abundant populations of deer and antelope species such as Cheetal, Sambar and Four Horned Antelope. There are small populations of Asian elephants and wild water buffaloes as well. Gharial is restricted to some rivers. In the slide we can see the Asian elephant and the teak forest. Next we will be talking about the Gangetic plain zone. This is one of the largest zones in India stretching from Yamuna river eastwards across Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal and coastal plains of Orissa. This represents one of the main fertile areas. This flat alluvial zone is topographically fairly homogeneous and constitutes 10.8% of the world's geographical area. This zone supports many large and charismatic mammals such as one-horned rhinoceros, Asian elephant, and wild water buffalo. Other characteristic fauna includes swamp deer, hog deer and hispid hare. Sal forest represents potential vegetation along the Himalaya and mixed dry deciduous forest in plains. Western areas hold relict populations of rhinos, 
elephants, buffaloes, swam deers, etc. In the slide, we can see the rhinoceros and the sal forest plantation. Coastal zones. The coastal zone constitutes 2.5% of the geographical area and covers beaches, mangroves, mud flats, coral reefs and marine angiosperm pastures. Sundarbans share with Bangladesh is the largest contiguous mangrove area in the world. The Lakshadweep Islands having a biodiversity rich reef lagoon system are also included in this zone. The fauna are dung dong, humpback dolphins of the turbid waters, varied turtles, especially Batagor, Baskar of Sundarbans, Isturi and the ancient giant soft shell turtle. In the figure we can see the humpback dolphin and the mangrove forest. The northeast zone. This is one of the richest in communities in species and is characterized by diverse habitats and long term geological stability. The northeast zone covers 5.2 percent of India's geographical area. There are significant levels of endemism in all floral and faunal groups. It is only in the northeast and the full richness of the large herbivore fauna typical of alluvial grasslands can still be found. Rhinoceros, buffalo, elephants, swamp deer, hawk deer, pygmy hawk and hispid hare. The regions represent an important flyaway for waterfowl and other heads seasonally migrating. In the slide we can see the swamp deer and the yellow ladies orchid. The tenth zone is the islands. Although this zone covers only 0.3% of the country's geographical area, it is nonetheless important from the biodiversity perspective. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands have some of the India's finest tropical evergreen moist forests and show high degree of endemism in flora and fauna. The importance of this zone is its species richness and endemism of plants and birds. Because of the isolation of islands and their relatively small size, mammal fauna is poor. Most species are of rodents and mammals. To summarize, we can say that India is a highly diverse country in terms of its topology, its flora and fauna. These studies give us an idea to how to protect and conserve the endangered and endemic wildlife and plant life. Thank you.